And still with Steve Biko, the Azanian People's Organization, Azampo, has visited the cell in which Steve Biko died on the 12th of September 1977. This is an annual event in which organizations aligned to the black consciousness philosophy. Our reporter Lindo Kutle at Ladla has more. Well, of course, we're at the Hosimampuru Correctional Services here in Pretoria, which is formerly known as the Pretoria Central Prison. And of course, we would remember that today marks the 42 year since the brutal killing of the father of the black consciousness. And we've, of course, today celebrating and commemorating the day. But to tell us more on that, we have the president of Azapo here with us to tell us more on it. Thank you so much, sir, with your time. Can you please tell us as to say, what, is, what are we doing here today? What does the day mean to South Africans? Once again, we are here. We are here every year, this time, to commemorate Stephen Bantubiko. This year is the 42nd anniversary. We come here to draw strength. We come here to rededicate, rededicate ourselves. We come here to say, Steve Biko, you gave us your life, you gave us a philosophy, you gave us your family and you sacrificed for us. And we are here to remember that. But you are saying today it's also special in a sense that as we commemorate this day, Robert Mugabe has gone. The father of nationalism, African nationalism, and the person who is homegrown, he's not given to us, he's one of our own. With all his mistakes, but he made it possible for us that this country should be free. And we want to salute Mugabe for that. We regret, however, that the children of those who gave us sanctuary and sacrifice are being persecuted in this country. The African brother, the African sister, the African mother and the African child who has come here to enjoy this freedom is being persecuted by our people. And we say as a nation, we can do better. We are here to say to Steve, Biko, we ne ne mukwechane. It's regrettable. We're saying, Biko, those children who are killed even by their parents, it's regrettable. We say, Biko, your sacrifices should not be in vain. Let us prevail over the bad spirit and come up with a clean spirit to heal and cure our country. This is what we have come here to ask this year. Another year we ask for something, another year we ask for something, but this year, we say we can do better, and we pray that we prevail. Thank you. I also want us to talk more of the philosophy, of the philosophy, sorry, of the Black Conscious Movement. It's 2019, after 42 years of the assassination of Steve Biko. What does it mean to a South African today? Um, it can, the, the, the Black Consciousness philosophy, it's what freed this country. Spiritually, more mentally, and physically. That is a philosophy that must carry this country forward. If we ignore black consciousness, we ignore it at our own peril. As a young person, I was given black consciousness. And because I ate and drank and imbibed it, I can't steal the coffers of our people. I can't be invited to come and do corruption. That is black consciousness. But also it says, as Africans, as black people, when we don't accept and take black consciousness, we are rejecting ourselves. That is why you see people killing other black people. If what you call foreigners were not here, and there's lack of black consciousness, the Zulus were going to kill the Sutus. The Sutus were going to kill the Tuanas. The Tuanas were going to kill the Pedis. But black consciousness says we are one people. We are one nation. That's why we say one Azania, one nation. One African country, one people. This is what we stand for. So ignore black consciousness 
ignore it at your own peril. And of course, he pioneered the movement. But to further stretch this on, today we see issues of corruption. We have the state capture. We have issues where women are brutally killed. Do we still leave the legacy of Steve Biko? Well, we have strayed away from it. But as the Azanian People's Organization, marginalized as we might be, this is what we live for. We live for nothing else but to put across the ideals of Biko, black consciousness. Well, thank you so much for your time, sir. And that, of course, is the president of Azapo. And to further stretch this on, I have with me uh, Robin Island, the secretary general, who also worked with Bigo, Mr. Zitulele Ekindi. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for your time. Please tell us more about the experience that you had with U U Steve Bigo. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Um, well, let me start by saying that every year when one comes here, one comes with sad memories. Um, <clears throat> the cell where we've been used to be the death row. And just behind it, it's the quadrant, open space. And then behind that are other cells. Now for two years, 45 years ago, for two years, we were there at that uh, cell held in detention during trial. And one of the moments that sadly comes to mind, but also uh, also captures the history then. Steve Bigo was the leading defense witness for us when the Black Consciousness trial was on. He gave evidence about what Black Consciousness stands for and what it means. Um, so it becomes a sad moment to come through. Now, you, you preface by saying Robin Island. When the news came through that Steve Bigo has, be, has been detained uh, we were on Robben Island that time, and I remember sadly because he was detained on my birthday, the 18th of August, and when six weeks later we heard that he has been killed, we all felt, all of those of us who were on trial with the Seth Coopers, the, the late Muntumiaza and others, we felt that had Steve Bigger been charged, he would not be dead, because we stood on trial for the ideas that were going to liberate the black person. We stood on, tri on trial for upholding the dignity of, black, of a black man. If the powers that be, the rulers, the administrators, the authorities, can live through this philosophy of Batupil, they would understand that they are serving the black person. They should uphold the black dignity. But the, it's only the words that they use. Batupil means nothing to them. How do you explain an account for countless people who are dying, dying in supposedly health institutions, dying supposedly at school, falling into pit, pit latrines, dying for standing for their rights at Marikan. How do you explain those things? If you understood and respected the black dignity, black dignity you'd not be doing those things. There's quite a lot of things. Corruption basically says, I am going to steal because the people whom I'm supposed to serve don't deserve what I'm supposed to give them, and therefore I steal. That is not what black consciousness te teaches. If there's any time when we need black consciousness, it's now more than any time. He was a student activist, and of course today, what motivation, today we celebrate his legacy, what motivation can you give to today's youth to keep his spirit living with us? Well, as it was pointed out, Azapo since 1978 has been commemorating the death of Steve Bigo for all this period. Now, the youth has come in, as you, uh, you made the point that is, as a student, student movements are, are what I call transient. They are students for the next three to four years. After that, they go into adult life. But importantly is that the philosopher of black consciousness has informed what has happened two, three years ago with the FISMA's fall movement. They openly said that we get our inspiration and succulence and confidence from black con teachings of black consciousness. So black consciousness is not dead. It is there. It's imbued in the minds of people. So whenever they take action, they'll always acknowledge that they were inspired by black consciousness. And we can call upon the youth to continue. The youth are rising. They may consider us to be irrelevant and outdated. But today, they are still rising in all their various corners at schools, in the, in, in the townships. More importantly and worryingly is that when you've got so many of them unemployed, able-bodied young people, that spells danger for this country. Thank you so much for your time. Well, that's it. You have it there. The experience and the memory he had with uh, Stephen Bantubiko. It's back to studio.